Hey, physical science students, it's Mrs. Smith here. In the next couple days, you're going to be working on creating a formal lab report for your paper towel lab. Uh, so in this video, I'm just going to go through a couple of pointers on how to make sure you're setting it up properly and also give you some hints on how to do data tables and graphs in case you've never done that using Microsoft Word before. So what you need in front of you is your rough draft of your paper towel lab and also on your computer, you should have a Word document open. Good thing to do is to put your title up at the top. Make sure your title includes both the dependent and independent variable. It's also a good idea to put your name, the fact that you're in physical science class, what period you are, your teacher's name, and the due dates. As you can see, I put that information here. Picture isn't required, but it's a good idea. So this is an example of a setup that you could do. And our little disclaimer here, as we go through this, this is an example lab report to help you organize your own. Use your rough draft to create your actual lab report. And as always, make sure you come see me if you have any questions. All right, you need to put a heading for each of your sections. So if you look at your rough draft, the first section after the title is the problem. So create a heading. It's always a good idea to make your heading stand out a little bit more. So after you type it just in the general font, a good idea would be to increase the size. You can do that by pressing this big A makes it larger, the little A makes it smaller, or you can click on the drop down menu and just choose what font size. I also chose to bold it, which is this button right here, the B. Another option is if you hit, uh, hit control B, that can also bold it as well. Once you've put your heading, then uh, hit enter and underneath it, write out the appropriate information. For the problem of your lab, remember you were supposed to write it as a question. After that is the concept section. Again, create a heading. And again, a good idea would be to bold print it or to increase the size. You could also underline it. Just make sure you're remaining consistent and choose to pick the same method for every heading. Under that, write your paragraphs. Remember your first paragraph is supposed to be about what paper towels are for and also examples of them. Don't just create a list of examples. Try to explain your examples. Give specific samples of where you may have used them in the past. Your second paragraph is going to be your information about your individual paper towel rolls, the four different brands you were testing. You can write that out as a paragraph or if you'd like to put it in data table format, that is fine as well. To create a data table, you're going to press the insert tab up here. So there's insert, click table. For this specific table, it's five columns and five rows. So we'd want a five by five table. So if you click five by five, that's the initial table that you're, you're gonna get. If you look down here, mine looks a little bit different. So how did I make those changes? Well, after I put in the information, I just changed the cell size by dragging back and forth. I typed in the information that I wanted. I also bold printed it, which you don't have to do but it's good for headings. Remember, control B is a shortcut. Um, I also use the paint function to highlight the whole top section. So if you look, I can highlight the entire top bar. And from my home tab, there's a button that looks like a paint can. And I can choose any color that I would like there. And I just picked gray. You could pick any color that you wanted. So there's one option of making a data table. Again, you could also write this out in paragraph form. And get rid of the practice one. After that's your hypothesis. You should be writing all the information from the hypothesis template except for italicized print because remember the italicized print is your directions. So you should be putting your independent variable, your dependent variable, your controlled variables. Remember your controlled variables are anything that you want to remain consistent between each of your trials to make sure that there's only one actual variable being tested, which is the brand of paper towels. Make sure you include the appropriate control, which was used for the entire class, and then your experimental groups where the remaining three brands of paper towels when you get to your materials and equipment section, you're going to want to provide lists. A good way to do lists is with bullet points. The bullet button is right here. You can see it highlighted. And if you press on it, you can see it's going to unbold it, unbullet it. Excuse me, when I press on it, it's bullets again. If you're like, I don't want just circles, I want cooler bullet points. If you click on the arrow next to the bullet button icon, you can see there are other options as well. Remember, materials are items that you discarded at the end of the experiment. Equipment would be items that could have been reused by other students in future labs. 
for your safety section, you should have safety information there. A lot of students I heard just saying, oh, there's nothing that we need to do. We're just using paper towels. But that's not true. A lot of you were using glassware. Some of you were using balances. You were using water. Um, you had to keep your spaces organized. So try to think of at least three or four different pieces of safety uh, information. And remember, you do have a handout about safety in a science classroom from our very first unit to give you some ideas. Procedure should be a step-by-step -step list of everything that you did in your lab. Be very specific. If you cut out your paper towels so that they are all the same size, make sure you include what size each of the paper towels was in the metric system. So not inches, but in centimeters. Um, uh, make sure you include how much water you used, what you used to measure it. Anything that you did needs to be included in your procedure in a sequ sequential list um, of steps. One thing that you can do is if you repeated a series of steps with a different paper towel brand, you can say that. One of your steps could be something along the lines of repeat steps one through seven for paper towel Viva brand or repeat steps two through five for paper towel brand X, whichever one it is. And that can help you shorten up your procedure but still remaining very specific. To do numbers, there is a numbering button. I'm pressing on it right now. So if I press it, it will undo my numbering. If I press it again, um, it puts my numbering back. Your next section was data and observations. You're creating another data table. Note mine is just an example. Yours may not look exactly like this, but use your data to create a nice data table. You can see up here I did something called merging cells. So for example, I'll insert another fake data table. So let's say I wanted a nice heading all the way up at the top here. I could highlight all those cells, right click, and then click merge, and that would merge the cells. If I decided that I didn't want it merged all the way across, I can click the split cells. And let's say I wanted to split it into three columns. You can see it would split it into three columns. So there's lots of options for your data tables. Just make sure you're including all the appropriate information, trials one, two, and three, and also your averages. Make sure you include units where they are needed. In your data section, you're also going to create a graph. You can create the graph using Microsoft Word by going to the Insert button and pick Chart. It is a column chart, so we would click on that. When you click on it, it's going to open up an Excel document. So we will wait for it, and then you'll put in your specific information based on your lab. So your brands of paper towels would go here, so brand um, you know, A, B, C, D, whatever your brands are. Your series are your trials. So you had trial one, then you had trial two, then you had trial three. But we also want to include our class averages. So you could pull that over and add a class, I'm not a class average, I'm sorry, uh, the averages for your data. And then you'd fill in the appropriate data, whatever it is that you are collecting here. Once you do that, it will create a nice data table for you. But if you look at my uh, newly created data table, it doesn't have a title, it doesn't have its axes labeled. So where you'd want to go is to the Layout tab up at the top, Chart Title. You can pick either Above or Overlaid. Your axis, you can label your horizontal axis, you can label your primary vertical axis. So make sure you go through and put your labels on your data table as well, or I'm sorry, on your graph as well. Over here you can see a little screenshot of the data I put in to create the graph that you see here. When you make your actual graph, I just need to see the graph, I don't need to see the Excel data table. Last section of your lab report is your conclusion. You should have six total paragraphs, so please separate it as six separate paragraphs. Make sure you're including lots of information. Make sure you're providing specific data from your lab results and include everything that your rough draft asks for. Also remember to proofread all of your responses before you're done. If you have any typos or grammatical mistakes, please fix them. And also make sure you print it out before the due date. It's okay to print two-sided. You can save paper that way, but it's not required. It's also okay to either single space or double space. That's another question I get. Either is fine, whatever you think is going to work best for your lab report. If you have any questions, make sure you come see me. Remember, your report should be printed out and ready to go at the beginning of class on the due date.